Good evening and welcome to the world today. The month is May. The place is Paris. It's 50 years since the big events that took place in France, other parts of Europe, South America, Asia, Africa. Uh, but we're, we happen to be in France today in the apartment of a historian, uh, Ludovic Bontigny who has written a remarkable book on that year, the best book I have read uh, in recent years, which explains what actually happened in France. It wasn't just Paris. Uh, it wasn't just the revolutionary excitement of the barricades. That was there and very important. But it went much deeper than that. And 50 years after 68, where have we got to? Well, interestingly enough, though it's not the same context, but we're in France where several universities have been occupied, students fighting, struggling for their needs. Ludovine, welcome and thanks for letting us uh, use your apartment, which isn't too far from where the barricades went up 50 years ago. Um, but let's talk about your book, Thank because you that's so what interests me. The events will come into it. Uh, the cover of this book, unlike many other books, shows a group of women workers and, and male workers in the plants at Lyon on strike. And, and if, if you look at this photograph, it's not just that they're on strike. You look at the joy on their faces. Yeah. And that is a sign of hope. And hope is something that has been missing for so long now in, in, in most of Europe and North America, even though there are struggles, they are struggles of necessity. Yes. Whereas these were also struggles of hope. Now, what made you write this book? Because you're young, you didn't participate in those uh, events. What caused you to turn in this direction? To me, it was very important to come back to this event, so important, so crucial events, uh, because it was a very big strike, a general strike, and uh, I wanted to break with all the cliché on 1968, because uh, there was um, a very ideological instrumentalization of 1968 because of the fear that something like 1968 uh, could happen uh, one more time and um, that's why there were, there were a lot of um, uh, deformations about uh, um, the events because uh, um, they try to forget that it was a general strike and a very important alliance between uh, working class, peasants 
and uh, students, of course, high school students, uh, secondary school students. But also students. other social layers in society. Yes, yes. And um, what was very important, uh, as you underscore that, is uh, the, the link between all them and the hope, the hope of changing life. And I, I wanted to scrutinize uh, all the projects uh, which emerged uh, during the events, and not only during the events, but um, thanks to the strike and thanks to uh, the time which uh, strike um, offers uh, in order to uh, reflect, to think about other worlds, other political and social worlds. And um, uh, yes, uh, I wanted to come back to the political imagination, to the creativity, because there is a lot of uh, a lack now today uh, of uh, political imagination. <laughs> People want to talk, to listen, to express themselves, to exchange views. Everything is put into question. The role of the student in the university, the role of the university in society are re-examined as action committees spring up in every institution of higher education. Traditional institutions appear to collapse of their own weight into popular democracies. The students appear to be launching a new civilization. You have mentioned uh, the, the strikes in the universities, and it's a hope, I think, to mm, forge bridges between the uh, past and present. Arriving in Paris yesterday, I opened my copy of Liberation and saw eight pages on uh, 68 and the 50th anniversary, and the editor of uh, Liberation, which of course is a newspaper that arose out of those struggles, um, but then moved on. But he is dealing with the right and uh, neocon right attacks on 68 and defending 68 in a broad sense. But this is unusual. The majority, I mean, if you look at uh, Le Figaro and Le Monde and other papers, establishment papers of the centre, effectively they want to do two things at the same time. First, underplay the significance. Yes. And secondly, say, oh, well, it was a few kids getting excited in Paris. They have learned their lessons. They now know it was all a utopian dream. And, you know, you see headlines like 10 minutes of utopia, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. If it was nothing, why go into mm -hmm. such big details about the 50th anniversary? Why? I think that it's ne it's uh, necessary for them to speak about uh, the event because they know that uh, a lot of people are interested in 1968, especially in this year, because uh, a lot of people want to come back to this um, these hopes and the, the, there was a, a, a political situation with a lot of uh, disappointment, of course, and that's why the, there was a huge interest for 1968. And um, hence, uh, uh, the power, media, me, media power and the political one um, want to say, OK, we, let's speak about 1968. And uh, even uh, the president of uh, the Republic, Emmanuel Macron, uh, uh, has imagine, is imagined to uh, celebrate, officially celebrate uh, 1968 uh, to us. It's uh, it's <laughs> not a possible joke. at all. Yes, it's a joke, but it's not only a joke, unfortunately, because um, finally uh, Emmanuel Macron's way to celebrate 1968 is to. Um, uh, um, afford the, the police uh, uh, go to the uh, in the occupied universities and uh, with a lot a lot of violence of poli um, the violence of the police is uh, amazing. <laughs> what they are very very afraid of is uh, this meeting this the way of meeting uh, between 
uh, young people and um, and workers, and it's um, there are lots of uh, similar ingredients now in this actual situation between, so for instance, um, railway uh, workers and students. And um, as for um, in 1968, uh, now um, railway workers. Um, go to uh, the in the universities and to um, talk uh, with students of course and to, to try to make links between uh, the, the two the both the two struggles and that's why it's important to the power to to say no uh, you you can see that uh, 1968 um, provided uh, neoliberalism and individualism <coughs> and of course it's very unfair, it's very false. This is the uh, uh, mythology of 68 created by the ruling elites and the attempt in France is cleverer because in some other parts of Europe they say it was all uh, nonsense. In Italy, in Germany they say it led to terrorism. Yes. But in France they want to confiscate the aspirations of 68 and change them, transform them. No, this is not what it was about. It was really about having fun and sex and in Britain it was largely about that, actually. Uh, apart from the big anti-Vietnam War demonstrations, in 68 itself, the most radical thing in the culture, apart from the big demonstrations, was the uh, rock musicians. The rock music was very radical. In France, prior to 68, you had cinema, which was very powerful. Yes. Jean-Luc Godard uh, and his... Uh, his way of making films in those yes. days, anonymously, three or four people collaborating on a movie, putting the movies out without name. Yes, with Chris Marker too. Chris, Chris Marker, Marker, of course. was yeah. a very important filmmaker. Uh, politically, he wanted to give uh, his camera to workers in order for them to... To make their own make, film. Yes. But in your book, Ludovine, you give chapter and verse of the strikes that took place, of the nature of the working class movement, of its parties, of what happened. Now just to remind people watching this who don't know that in May, June 68, the movement led to a situation where France was paralyzed and it was paralyzed by the largest general strike in the history of capitalism. <laughs> Never happened before or since. Ten million workers on strike. The workers joined the students in the streets on May 13. Now, to the dismay of union leadership, wildcat occupations of factories, businesses, even government offices spread throughout France. A modern industrial state grinds unbelievably to a halt. Not a token one-day strike is in the past, but an open-ended paralysis. Again, the political demands of a minority of workers, usually younger ones, and the more broadly held economic demands of unions provide the stated goals for the strike. Demands for worker control and the 40-hour week, for participation and higher wages, appear side by side. The union leadership spends the second half of May racing just to stay abreast of its membership. By May 22nd, without central coordination, there are 10 million workers on strike. Occupying factories. And I remember if from that time, trade union bureaucrats going in and saying, we've spoken to the government, they've given us a 20% wage rise. And workers saying, <laughs> and the bureaucrats saying, then what do you want? And many workers shouting, we want the factory. I think that it was an very, very, Im the, the most important, as you, as you say, the, the most important uh, general strike in the history of capitalism. And um, um, the, the, there were a lot of memory of former struggles uh, in a lot of factories. And that's why perhaps uh, 
two two historical uh, events uh, were in the in minds of the strikers. It was the Commune of Par Paris yeah, of in 1871. Yeah. Uh, because it was a, a political form of emancipation, of self-government for the working class. And uh, uh, everywhere, not, not only in Paris, but in some uh, big cities during the strike, we can hear uh, uh, it's the commune. Uh, 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 the commune is back. The memory the was very strong. Yes, very strong with uh, uh, some uh, theatre uh, pieces and some newspaper uh, on the... And the posters. Yes. The which posters were very... Course. I mean, in the yes. commune too, the artists got together in the 1871 commune. And uh, the other uh, historical reference is a popular front uh, in 1936, uh, uh, yes. And, uh, but the, there was a discussion, a political discussion about the, the popular front because... Um, to the Communist Party, it was a success, and uh, because of the uh, a lot of uh, social um, results, uh, yeah. very important <coughs> reforms. results and reforms. Yeah. But to other revolutionary groups, uh, it was a failure because uh, the they could have been a revolution um, and during this uh, very crucial period. So a lot of people. Um, had during 1968 uh, strike the, the uh, a very historical consciousness they had the, they were uh, they were aware to contribute to history uh, to a very big event and uh, they, um, they thought that uh, everything will change afterwards and uh, they change they, they believe that uh, uh, the Capitalism uh, could be uh, broken. Yes. Defeat? Yes, defeated. Where did the strikes begin? Tell me that. Yes. Let's the strike began um, in uh, the neighborhood of Nantes, uh, in the factory called uh, Sud Aviation. It's an aeronautic uh, factory. And um, the workers, uh, with uh, trade unions, of course, and trade unions are very important uh, during the strike. And uh, it was um, anarcho, anarcho, anarcho syndicalists, syndicalist, uh, um, who decided not only to uh, propose the strike, but to propose the occupation of the factory and the um, sequestration of the of the employer. So basically, they occupied the factory and arrested yes. the owner in his office. Yes. Yeah. And they proposed to him to listen to the international <laughs> song. That, uh, so and it was the first occupation of a factory. And then uh, the strike um, was spreading. And um, during uh, the, the last few days of May, uh, 10 million people uh, decided to stop everything, to stop working in order to meet, in order to speak, in order to be conscious of um, their political legitimacy and uh, in order to think about alternative. It could be a thought about uh, the ways to change life by a reformist way. Yes. And uh, but um, with this um, reformist um, demands, um, some very um, important political questions were raised to the, the question of the power, and especially the question of the power of the working class. And in some places. Uh, some strikers um, asked, why do we need uh, uh, chiefs and yeah, bosses. leaders and buses and uh, we can... Uh, Run it ourselves. Yes, of course. And it was a que the question of the self-government, what we here called autogestion. Uh, self-management. Self-management. Uh, of course, the most important uh, left-wing organization during this time was uh, communist, French Communist Party. Well, it was a huge... People uh, yeah. these days, uh, Ludwig, cannot imagine this, yeah. but the French Communist Party was a huge party 
yes. with millions of supporters, yes. uh, with its own newspapers, daily newspapers, weekly newspapers, publishing houses. It played a big part in French culture. So what this party did was going to be very important. Yes, of course. And um, the French Communist Party was the only organization, uh, political organization, uh, which uh, didn't want to speak about revolution. Even Gullists <laughs> uh, wanted to um, uh, appropriate the world. the world in order to say, uh, let's make revolution with de Gaulle. Charles de Gaulle, of course, became president of France after the uh, Second World War. Uh, he had participated from London in the resistance. His wing in the resistance had collaborated with the Communist Party and his supporters, Gaullists as they proudly called themselves, became in some ways a more imaginative version of the ruling class. Yes, let's make a revolution if you want a revolution. Let's but not make the PCA. The and the, the, the PCA, the French Communist Party, uh, didn't talk at all uh, about revolution and he, he he underscored uh, what uh, the, the, this party called uh, the French way to socialism uh, was, according to this party, a um, um, reformist movement, uh, an electoral movement, uh, with um, a, um, a way for all the left-wing organizations to unite. And uh, I think that uh, the Communist Party uh, was afraid of a uh, civil war. Um, and it was not revolutionary at all, um, this party. But, Ludovine, let me ask you something else which is more controversial. It was said at the time, uh, and I wonder whether in your book you found any evidence for this, it was said at the time that there was a secret meeting between some leaders of the French Communist Party and possibly de Gaulle, but definitely some Gaullists mm -hmm. to discuss how to bring the situation under control. Is this true? I haven't found any You evidence. haven't found any No, but, but uh, Georges Segui, the leader of the CGT, explained uh, in his uh, memoirs uh, that uh, de Gaulle said to him, we have the same interest. Uh, our interest is to uh, break with the strike to stop stop to, it to stop the strike yes to stop the strike the strike and then we'll see uh, which of uh, both of us uh, will uh, uh, win during the ballot during the elections Election. <clears throat> and um, and I think that uh, what uh, yes uh, de Gaulle was right because I think that. Um, what he understood uh, in the um, in the last days of uh, May, when he flew to Baden-Baden in order to see the General Massu, he understood that the Communist Party uh, didn't want insurrection, Anything. rebellion, and he knows that uh, there, there were po uh, um, geopolitical uh, uh, reasons too, because uh, the Soviet Union uh, didn't want anything didn't, like Oh No, because uh, we have to remind that uh, it was uh, during these days, uh, the, the spring, the, the, in Czechoslovakia, Prague so Spring, yes, yeah. with an <clears throat> aspiration, a hope uh, for uh, democratic socialism. And it was very difficult uh, for uh, the Soviet Union to control this situation. It, uh, it was absolutely uh, 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 out of question to have a revolution in the west of uh, Europe. And that's why when we read uh, the Pravda, uh, we, we can no, see they that. Us. Yes, yeah, yes. But the Communist Party thought uh, that uh, it could win. Uh, the elections uh, because in 1967 there have been uh, some elections and the the, the left had gone. Uh, was oh. near to near <coughs> to win so uh, the communist party want wanted to 
participate to the elections and perhaps win them, but perhaps not. But it was not the crucial problem. The crucial problem uh, to them, the, the, the Communist Party conceived a, a huge hatred uh, against uh, all the leaders of uh, revolutionary groups. The ultra-left, as they called. Yes, yes. Uh, because... Um, he he was afraid, I think, of uh, uh, a way outflanked. for workers to yes to 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 over, overcome uh, the, the 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 situation and to uh, raise the question of power and uh, that's that it, it was a, a very important obstacle to the strike. And and the it's, other thing, I think, the other uh, slogan they used was, it's always very important to know how to end a strike. Yes, Every, everyone understood that the Communist Party wanted to stop uh, the strike, um, especially in the, um, in the early days of uh, June. Uh, Ludovic, last question. We started by discussing a bit the amazing historical memory mm -hmm. of the French working class and radical France in particular. Now this historical memory, even Sarkozy referred to it at one stage when he was president. Uh, he, he said, I was wanting to go to the right-wing demonstration against the 68ers. I was 16, but my mother stopped me <laughs> because she said it would be dangerous. So he said today when people say, ah, oh, we like Sarkozy and hasn't he got a beautiful wife and has, I don't take it seriously because I know France very well. One day it can say this and the next day it can cut off your throat. <laughs> so I thought even this conservative reactionary had some idea of historical memory. But let's just look at it seriously for a bit. You know, we had the 1790s, uh, we had a defeat of the most radical wing of the revolution, Napoleon was defeated in 1815, then you had a long period of uh, calm and peace, not unlike it, what it's been like recently. Then you had the 1848 revolutions, then you had 1871, and the Paris Commune, whose memory still lives in many ways. And then we had uh, 1936 and the Popular Front. Then we had 1968. 50 years. Nothing like that has happened, which is the longest gap, if you like, in revolutionary French history. Mm -hmm. Do you think... I know the situations have changed completely. I know what's happened. I know the world is a wreck. But do you think that something like that could happen again? Yes, I, I think so, and I want to, uh, to hope so, that, um, that this perspective, because I think that um, by contrast with the 1980s and the 1990s, um, there were alternatives. Margaret Thatcher said that there is no alternative, but now I think that especially young people don't want to be resigned to... Just accept the status. accept and admit that uh, uh, as if uh, it is a natural uh, way of thinking. I think that um, this this long period um, we, w during which uh, the, the capitalism was uh, triumphant, uh, yes, is finished, um, and. Um, um, among young people, especially uh, as you can see during uh, the movement of 
occupa une nuit debout, Notre-Dame-des-Landes, and the Zad. The, the, um, that was a very rich uh, political imagination and uh, a way of uh, attach, uh, attach the, the, the theory and the practice and the agency. The, and I think that, uh, yes, th there is a very huge disappointment against uh, the, the political class and um, um, lots, lots of people want to, to ho hope again, I think, yes. Ludwig, thank you very much. Thank you so much for your interest.